These are my paintings, all nine of them. Done in the photorealistic school. Photorealistic meaning it looks like a photograph, but it's not a photograph, it's a painting. Done with acrylic, using very bright colors, a lot of primary colors, candy particularly. I've switched over to food this year and have a hamburger and a bagel and lox, uh, just to be different, see how that works out. At first I started copying. I copied the masters, Picasso, Lichtenstein, you name it, I did it. Uh, and I, I was fairly successful, a lot of people liked the paintings. And then they said, do originality and do things that you like. And uh, I always liked candy. I started with the Tootsie Pop, which is over here. Did about six or seven different colors, and people loved them. They, they just, they flew off the shelf, so to speak. Actually, I'm a physician. I'm an ophthalmologist. And uh, so it was a career change when I retired. In fact, I'm introduced at parties as an artist, not a doctor which is really funny. I spent over 35 years being an ophthalmologist. My name is Neil Dern, and I'm a photographer. I became a photographer after 9-11. It saved, actually saved my life because of the fact that I was involved in 9-11. I was there. My work basically is what you see. It's all natural. It's not fixed in any possible way. I've had an interest in photography almost all my life. You know, I never really had a chance to take it, make it, take it further than just hobbyist. But now, it's become a full-time thing. So here I have fiberglass uh, sculptures that I've done, that I use plaster and different mixed medias. I'm doing this for fun, it's my hobby. I love it, I'm semi-retired. So I just got into this about two years ago, and I was very successful two years ago with it, so I decided to take it a step further. And now I went into more mix, more edgy, more a little bit of, of different, um, the mask, as you can see here, that I got in Italy, that I decided to use. Fabrics, designer fabrics, different things like that. That's been fun. My name is Christian Bakker from Quito, Ecuador. What I try to do with my paint is to share whatever I have in my heart, to be able to uh, communicate uh, happiness, love, uh, and to share that to the world. Uh, I have three studios, one in Quito, Ecuador, uh, which is my main studio. Uh, I live in the mountains, and that's where I paint, in the rural, rural area. Then I have a smaller studio, second studio here in uh, Miami, uh, Florida, and a third studio in Madrid, Spain. I'm an abstract expressionist painter. I'm also a sculptor. Mostly what I try to do is just express my, my feelings through the art that I do. These are all encaustics and these are collages. They are similar but very, very different in creating. Collage and the way I do encaustic is a mixed media process. Encaustic is a combination of wax and damar varnish that's melted on a surface and then you either infuse materials in or paint on top or add pigment to the encaustic medium and then you have to use the heat gun to seal everything and it's layer on layer and layer and layer and then you polish it and buff it and it has its very own surface. The collages on the other hand I've been doing for years and it's just a process of adding materials together to create a unified image and convey your meaning and it's all fun. Art is wonderful. What I'm displaying is the art that I've been doing for the past couple of years. I retired uh, about three and a half years ago as an interior designer, and I'm only doing projects with the nonprofit sector and my own artwork. And there was one intense period that I got a lot done for four days because during Hurricane Irma, we had no cable and, <laughs> and no computers. so. I worked straight through for four days. A few of those pieces are here, but this stretches over about 15 years. My real love is handmade books. It's also something that we collect. And most of the books that I show are unique. They're one of a kind. There are a few that I additioned, um, like my little book of little books. Some of these are my way of doing a travel diary. 
So I create books with pockets and then collect as we go along. There are a couple different series I've done, and the ones that utilize uh, pieces of technology are kind of my protest against the fact that I'm not sure how much I like technology. The two prints are actually printed from a circuit board, which I love printing, and um, just using them in different ways. But when I do things with different methods of printing, it's not to make an addition of prints, but to use those prints, which are a unique, unique way of creating the image and then adding to it, um, either by gluing things on, like all my little pieces of technology. But at one point, when my pacemaker had to be replaced, I said, you've got to give me that when you're done. So that went into the artwork. A couple things kind of get political in this book, which took a while, and it's called The Warning. And the piece on the back says, if you are not scared, you are not paying attention. And it has all different things. These are the color codes for letting us know what the danger is. And you can see how horrified this image is. For many years, I traveled around the world. And these are some of my pictures, primarily from Asia, China, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. They are still shot with film. They're not digital. If I have a roll of 36 pictures in the camera, I might not even take 36 in a day because if it's not worth taking, I don't take it. I don't go out and take 5,000 pictures and then look to see if I have something good. So uh, they're all done with a, uh, an old Nikon. They're all composed in the camera. There's no cropping. I just let somebody else print. And they're just extensions of my vacations. Not only is it things that I see, but I try to have composition, try not to have like uh, a no stop sign sticking out from behind the guy's head. And that's one of the differences between photographs and snapshots. The people who take snapshots, they only see what they're looking at and they don't see what else is in the frame. So composition is not hard, you just have to look what's there. Where did that come from? Well, it was there the whole time. You just didn't see it because you were concentrating on your Aunt Mary. My work was born uh, out of my studying textile design and getting enamored with the woven process. So I used to actually weave fabric. And then when I stopped doing that, years later I came up with the idea of shredding paper and using that process and doing uh, artwork. And that's how it began. And I started with small little things like this. Work with the framer, which is my original uh, concept, using the framing um, to coordinate with the colors. And, but now I've gotten a little bigger and uh, comfortable with the paper uh, medium. And I'm doing other things. And there's so many papers out there from all over the world, which uh, I had no idea once I started doing my research and shopping online and their hand. I mean, this piece is, has actually threads in the background. The inspiration comes from the paper itself at this point as well. 